Good morning, good afternoon, good night, everybody. Uh, I don't know where you guys are watching us. I'm Barbara Pinheiro. I'm a, a doctor in oceanography, speaking from Brazil. And I'm uh, first, I would like to thank the organizers for the invitations to be part of this talk and to start our uh, Friday in Marine Biodiversity Network Fridays. Today, we have a special team that is we're going to celebrate black voices in marine science and we have the honor to have with us as a speaker uh german uh, baby baby <laughs> and he he's a seasoned executive leader and operation expert with a decade of experience in the nonprofit sector climate tech organization and technology industries and as a, a new uh, appointed chief operator Operating Officer in Black in Marine Science, the BIMS. Jermaine brings his passion for marine science, environment awareness, and advocacy for social justice to the helm of the organization. Jermaine holds a Bachelor of Science in Urban Planning from Florida Atlantic University and an MBA from Tex West Texas A&M University. His education backgrounds offer a unique blend of st strategic planning, business acumen and social environment understanding, equipping him with the necessary tools to navigate the complex challenge of our time. Jermaine's passion extends beyond the professional sphere and he's deeply engaged with his community and committed to initiatives to promote environmental awareness and social justice. Uh, with his strong leadership and unwavering community commitment to equip and inclusion, equity and inclusion, Jermaine is ready to inspire the next generation of black marine scientists and contributes to a more sustainable and just world. Uh, at BIMS, Jermaine is uh, excited to collaborate with a dedicated team of professionals and guide the organization towards new horizons of discovery, education and advocacy. Together, they will continue to make waves in the marine science world, fostering a future where everyone has the opportunity to contribute and benefit from our understanding and preservation of the oceans. Jermaine, uh, welcome, and it's a pleasure to talk to you this morning here, because in Brazil it's the morning and the afternoon. Uh, thank you for accepting the invitation to, to talk to us, and please, uh, the floor is yours. <laughs> <laughs> um, thank you so much for that, Barbara. Um, that's an amazing introduction. Um, I'm just so honored uh, to be here amongst all of you today. Um, I am coming out of sunny South Florida. Um, we're having already having a nice, bright, very hot day. Um, we've had nice record breakers. <laughs> for uh, I don't think we have any uh, 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 climate change uh, uh, deniers here. So, <laughs> but it's real. So I'm um, just really happy to be here. And um, thank you so much um, for all the teams that are putting this together. Um, it's, it's really been a, a a great uh, experience. And I'm, I'm glad to really um, be able to come here and really talk about uh, some of the initiatives and programs that we are doing here at BIPS. Okay, so just as you, I, I was uh, really graciously introduced today by Barbara, my name is Jermaine Beebe, and I currently serve as the Chief Operating Officer uh, for Black and Marine Science, also as BIMS. And so I just want to say again, I'm so honored and to be here today. Um, to be able to speak. Do it. Special thank you um, to the team at um, the Marine Bi Biodiversity Observation Network, um, the Geo Bi Biodiversity Observation Network, Air Center, and United Nations Decade of Ocean Science for Sustainable Development. Um, I appreciate you guys for having us um, and really kind of supporting BIMS um, during this um, journey we have been on. So first I kind of want to start off here. And so the reason we're going to start off today at this picture, um, because it's something that uh, many of us, the people of color have experienced um, going into you know, different professions, right? And particularly um, the sciences. And oftentimes when we come in um, to the profession, we come into um, the field, what we often find sometimes that we walk into a space 
um, that's very new to us. And we're looking for a place of belonging, places of acceptance. And oftentimes walking through the door, you end up feeling like you have many of us end up feeling like, hey, we are the only person of color in the room. And it's where it is during these times where you have organizations begin to ask and begin to ask the question of, hey, what are we doing about diversity? Because it becomes a very stark reality when you have situations like this, right? And so this is a situation where um, our founder, Dr. Moore, I wanted her first, her first invitation to be a part of a board and taking her group picture. And it became a very stark uh, um, reality for her realizing that, hey, there's a real kind of lack, lack of diversity. And I think everybody kind of noticed that and really knew that there was an initiative that needed to be made. And so here's a little bit about how Dr. Moore kind of describes kind of like that first, you know, board meeting, right? And she, she writes that, I walked into my first board meeting, not sure what to expect. Everyone was already there and turned to look when I entered. I read the sign on the door, so I knew I was in the right place. But for those few fleeting seconds, it felt like I was lost. Looking back at me were about 30 eyeballs and all white faces. And I immediately thought about Leslie Hauser, the first African-American student board member of ASLO. In, 20, in 2003, I wondered if she felt the same skipping of her heartbeat as I did. Did, the, did she question herself, her place, her role? I put on my infamous smile and introduced myself to the group. Welcome, they all responded. I settled in excited to talk about student events, but I quickly realized my role on the board would be much bigger than representing just students. And it's here in these moments that we see organizations being asked the question, what are we doing to address diversity? And it's in these moments where we answer the question, why BIMS? So who are we? BIMS, Black and Marine Science is a premier nonprofit 501c3 organization, and we're aimed at celebrating Black Marine scientists, spreading environmental awareness, and inspiring the next generation of scientific thought leaders. We were founded in 2020, and since then, we have grown from just a simple post on social media to a global organization. And the post I'm talking about is really during COVID when we had a lot of uh, demonstrations uh, and, and some racial issues that were happening in America. You know, Dr. Moore tweeted out, you know, seeking out, you know, where are the Black and Marine scientists? And this ended up turning into an entire movement um, later known as Black and Marine Science Week, and which then grew into an entire organization. And so our organizations really kind of focus on four main pillars, ocean literacy, community outreach, member development, and innovative research. But furthermore, we also became to, came to realize, you know, during the course of really kind of working and putting together BIMS and going through the research, we realized that the impact on really diversity in, in, in that issue that we're, that, we're, that we're really kind of focused on really starts at the root. And so we have here, we have a study that was, um, this is data by the National Science Foundation, found that in 2019, out of 416 ocean and marine science doctorate graduates, only four Black or African Americans received a doctorate in ocean and marine science. And so it's really where you hear you begin to realize that there's a real lack of a, a STEM pipeline going into the field, which also contributes to lack of, lack of Black people in the field. And so we set up this great vision, right? We're focused on being pioneering, pioneering a new era of Black marine scientists, empowering diverse communities to engage, explore, and excel through research, innovation, and leadership. We're focused on being global, uniting scientific thought leaders across the world because we believe in one ocean, one water. We're focused on being a change agent, serving as a catalyst for change, um, BIMS drives transformation, Trans transformative equity and inclusivity in, mar in marine science. And we're focused on being real, authentic movement. The BIMS brand is rooted in empowering current and future generations of Black marine scientists. And so we've come a long way. Um, we're now going into our, our fourth year in operations. And you know, we launched in 2020. 
Uh, we became an incorporated nonprofit. Around February 2021, uh, we launched um, one of our first programs, which is BIMS TV, and we launched our membership program. In August 2021, uh, we received our, really our first round of major funding, which is a $100,000 grant from the David and Lucille uh, Packard Foundation. Uh, 2022, um, BIMS, we developed a global partnership with OceanX uh, Project SETI in the Nature Conservancy and the Fragments of Hope. In 2023, um, we received $2 million grant from the National Science Foundation. A little clap for us. <laughs> <laughs> and since then, we have been actually the last two years, we have been working on, on, our, on our next major uh, initiative milestone, which we'll probably talk more. You'll start hearing more about which will be the BIMS Institute, which will be our first physical space on um, which will incorporate two lab spaces. We've also grown to have a great uh, diverse board. Uh, we have a strong and active board, uh, a good mix of environmental and business leaders um, throughout the nation. And we're also looking to grow that board and uh, also get some global participants in the next coming years. We also have a great team. Um, our team has grown with now having a new, we have five new staff members, um, giving us a total of eight full-time and two part-time team members. And as you can see, our outreach team has been busy forming both national and global partners. Um, if you don't see your logo here, um, I promise you, if you talk to me, we have plenty more room, all right? And so we want to move in to talk about a little bit about just some of the challenges that are faced um, by Black and by marine, you know, marine scientists all, all over the world, right? And there are a variety of challenges in the field. Um, first, we have under uh, underrepresentation, um, where Black and marine scientists are often underrepresented in their field which can lead to feelings of isolation and lack of community. Bias and discrimination, from explicit biases to overt acts of discrimination, Black marine scientists can face hurdles in their career progression, securing research funding, or having their work um, not recognized. Uh, limited network opportunities. Uh, fewer Black marine scientists can mean fewer mentors or role models to guide younger professionals in their career path access to resources. Um, in some regions, um, Black marine scientists might have limited access to research facilities, funding, or advanced technologies. Um, this is in particularly highlighted um, during my trip to Africa during WAMS. Um, and speaking to many of them there, um, we have a lot of students who really didn't have, the, haven't had the opportunity to have uh, um, access um, to levels of funding, uh, resources. Um, there were even students who hadn't who had even used pipettes yet. Um, so that, that's a major issue. Um, and then lastly, we see a lot of cultural barriers, right? Traditional knowledge and perspectives from Black communities might be overlooked or undervalued in the marine science field. And so our vision is to change the face of who people see as scientists and increase ocean literacy in the most impacted communities. Because oftentimes when we go out, people say, hey, I, never, I didn't even know that you know, there's Black marine scientists and I've always been interested in the ocean. And so the overarching goal here is to really change what, what a scientist looks like um, in order to increase that pipeline um, for more Black marine scientists. And so we're going to move into this next session is really now how does BIMS address these challenges and capitalize on the opportunities that we have available to us, right? And first and foremost, we set a number of really key objectives that we feel um, we have the capacity to make the biggest impact on, right? First is empowering underrepresented communities in marine science, right? We do that by first collaborating with local K through 12 and community organizations to raise awareness about marine science programs, opportunities, and establish scholarship programs. Second, we establish partnerships for internships and experiential learning opportunities, where we seek to forge connections with local and national marine science organizations, uh, research institutes, and government agencies. Lastly, we seek to strengthen career placement support for marine science graduates and postgraduate professionals. So we do things by offering workshops, seminars, placement opportunities, as well as networking events. 
So I want to talk about a little bit about some of the programs at BIMS. Um, and so we've had, we've been able to really develop some great impact. And one of my favorite is BIP Week. And BIP stands for Black and Marine Science Immersion Program. With BIP Week, BIM strives to provide underserved communities access to hands-on and real-world scientific experiences in marine science. So during BIP Week, we take about 10 undergraduate students um, and they take part in a free program specialized for those that have not yet had the opportunity to complete an internship or gain professional experience in marine science. During BIP Week, uh, students have travel and room and board expenses covered, uh, become scuba certified, uh, participate in ocean cleanup efforts, um, assist with dune restoration. Um, they also go on a historical tour um, and complete a mini coral reef project and, it, um, and so much more. Um, we've now, going into our third year of doing BIP Week, we've been able to develop a BIMS leadership development training program. And that has been able to design to, it's basically been designed to influence the next generation of, uh, of scientific thought leaders and really kind of encourage people to kind of stay in the field. Um, um, this is kind of a little bit of kind of what we happened in um, BIP Week at the Bahamas. This year we were at, we, 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 we took uh, 10 students to the Bahamas and we took 10 students to St. Croix. And so since 2020, um, we've hosted about over 25 students in our courses where they have received open water or advanced open water PADI certifications. And in 2020, 2023, we implemented the leadership development program for BIP alumni to influence like the next generation. Um, so our goal is to really kind of make that um, a very sustainable program. And we've seen interest in that um, increase dramatically um, year after year. Next is BIM's Tidal Wave. BIM's Tidal Wave was launched in 2022. Uh, the BIM's Tidal Wave program really aims to address the under, underrepresentation of Black scientists at conferences by providing comprehensive support for attendance and participation. Um, we really do this because we all know those of us who have been to conferences, we know that it's, it can be very pricey, right? And so there we recognize that there's real financial barriers that often limit uh, global scientists from showcasing their work. Um, this initiative um, that we've created really offers full support for travel, registration, as well as abstract uh, submissions. Uh, participants are able to collaborate with fellow BIM scientists, benefit from a dedicated exhibit booth to foster networking, and are also invited to community events, emphasizing cultural and grassroots efforts related to ocean and environmental justice at each conference location. Um, so we're really proud about this event, um, this program, and being able to really kind of give uh, uh, students and those who, who really may lack the means to really go to some of these conferences. Because um, many of us who are in, um, those of you who work in the field, who are in the field, really know that really going out to these conferences play a major, major role on being able to network and find role models and mentors. And next we have, BIMS TV. Um, BIMS TV is our YouTube channel. We've had it since 2022. Um, this is a platform that we have where we really kind of feature um, marine science content and really it's really focused on aiming uh, to increase ocean and environmental literacy. So since 2020, we've grown to over uh, 2,000 subscribers. And I want to tell you a little bit more about BIMS TV, right? So BIMS TV incorporates, incorporates a, a few different programs. First, we have BIMS Bites. BIMS Bites is a weekly series. It airs every Friday at 1 p.m. Eastern. Um, BIMS Bites is an 8 to 10 minute bite size of science hosted by various community members. It's really kind of showing off their expertise. Um, it's a great introduction to marine science for anyone interested in learning more. Uh, like I said, it's weekly series, Fridays at 1 p.m. Then we have Ben's Bites Kids. Ben's Bites Kids is a monthly series. It ends, it, it airs every first Saturday of every month. And it's used in schools to help amplify Black marine scientists while also advocating for educational curriculums and assisting teachers. Um, it's hosted by a great marine scientist, Andrew Walker, um, who does this every month. And really, BIMS Bites is really kind of like, it's called the bite size because it's really kind of 
uh, uh, give really sh short amounts of information um, that are easily digestible um, for, for children. And then we have BIMS Dives. BIMS Dives is a monthly series airing on the last Friday of the month. BIMS Dives is a deeper dive into marine topics with, with a marine community expert and two moderators. We have dive into, we dive into top topics such as mar maritime heritage and uh, archeology, span water safety and diversity in aquatics, coastal biology, innovation and technology in the maritime field and um, so much more. So it's a great um, program every month um, that, that we really work on um, to feature expert, expert guests. And lastly, we have some special program, um, which is a little bit outside of that, but we have BIMS Cares, which is about self-care and mental wellness um, for our experts. We have BIMS Reads, which features Black marine science authors. Um, BIMS Hall, which is a Q&A session on marine science, as well as BIMS special events. Um, this is an occasional programming where we're kind of usually airing live at particular events. Now, the cool thing about um, BIMS TV is that we really give back. So for those people who are looking to become a member or work with BIMS or participate in BIMS, you can actually earn with BIMS. So in, 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 with BIMS, we don't necessarily really believe in volunteers because we don't, we feel like everybody should be uh, compensated for their work. And so BIMS Bites is a weekly series featuring black science representing an eight minute bite into varying marine topics. So for every person, every time anybody wants to participate, you can do a BIMS Bites episode um, as long as it's eight minutes long and we pay $75 per episode. So believe it or not, if you were to want to be a member and you want to pay for your membership, doing two BIMS Bites episodes would pay for your membership and, and, and then so. So next I want to talk about just quickly about just understanding sustainable goals in the field of marine science. And I kind of just want to go over a little bit because of our impacts. So to give you a big picture is kind of where, where we are and the impact that we have had. Um, in the last three years, we've been able to have about 32 partnerships. Um, we're at over 400 members in 31 countries right now. Um, I got to get you guys a bigger map, global map. <laughs> uh, we have five great sustainable programs. Uh, we have over 2,000 subscribers on our YouTube channel. Uh, we've been able to launch about scu uh, six scuba courses, and we've been able to raise $4.1 million um, in the last three years. And so with our membership, we are seeking to continuously make waves. Um, we are targeted outreach for, uh, for Black communities. Um, we're looking, all we have, we have a great learning team in which we seek to create bridges in high school programs. We offer mentoring, internships, uh, professional development workshops, uh, conference attendance support, in-house research, support and opportunities to publish research in, um, and we also offer a great uh, embedded job board. And to wrap it up, um, I definitely want to talk about really being thrilled right now to really introduce um, those of us who haven't heard about it yet. Um, BIMS Week is on its way. Um, we will be having an in-person event uh, uh, called the BIMS Week uh, Wellness Conference at uh, the Sheridan Norfolk Waterside Hotel from November 26th to December 2nd. And the great thing about this conference is really going to be, unlike a lot of conferences, is really going to primarily focus on professional development, uh, networking, um, really taking a real holistic approach by really integrating self-care and wellness, as well as personal, personal professional growth into the experience. And so you're not, as an attendee, you're not only going to gain valuable knowledge and skills, but also prioritize um, your well-being. So here is a QR code. It'll take you guys to a link, uh, a link wheel that I kind of send you all the links. I want to just thank some, thank, say thank you to all the great sponsors so far. That's that's right now making it, making this happen for us. Um, if you're if you're looking to be a sponsor or a vendor, we're still taking sponsors and vendors. If you're looking to uh, be a part of the retreat or to attend, it is going to be a spectacular event um, with really a great program lined up. We'll have a dinner cruise. It's really going to be a great place to really network, 
get to know uh, many people in, in the field, really interact and really have a good time. And it's really going to be really focused on really allowing, you know, us as professionals to kind of let our hair down a bit. Uh, we do know that the work sometimes is intense. It's sometimes going to be overwhelming. Uh, we're moving a lot. We're traveling a lot. And really kind of the point of BIMS Week is to allow us to really slow down as professionals and really take the time to really talk to each other, expand with each other, and really get to that second degree of networking where you just don't take somebody's information, but you actually have some time to really have some, a coffee with somebody and actually, you know, opine on some things and really kind of network. So I kind of want everybody just to really pick up, pick up their phones right now, scan this QR code, uh, download the packet, um, get your tickets. Um, you know, it's open right now for early registration. There's a discount code in there for you to save a ton of money. And we would love, we would love for you guys to be there. Um, if, you're, if you're not able to attend, definitely help us spread the word. Um, check us out at bims.org slash bimsweek2023. Um, so I hope you guys all got it. Um, I'll make sure that, you know, you guys get the packet and send it out. But definitely check us out at BIMS Week. Um, we're, we're, we're really going to be, uh, it's really going to be a great time. And so I just want to say thank you all again for having me. Um, I'm always available. As chief operating officer, I really don't sleep. <laughs> but I love what I do. If anybody ever wants to talk to me, um, you can reach out to me at germaine at bims.org. Um, all my contact information is here. Um, you can find me on Instagram as well. I do answer my DMs. Um, you know, any type of collaboration or anything you want to know as far as um, what we're working on, uh, the initiatives or how you can partner up um, with us. Thank you guys so much. And that's all. Wow. <laughs> all? That's amazing. <laughs> Thank you, Jermaine, for introducing us to this incredible uh, institution. And we do, I would like also to thank our audience. Uh, I saw that we have audience from Africa, Guinea-Bissau, uh, uh, US, Brazil. So everybody, please send a uh, the ones who are watching us from YouTube, you can send the message in the chat, the questions. And I already already have lots of questions in our Q&A here. So we're going to start with the big questions. So how can international people be part of the BIMS, uh, the BIMS uh, institution? Because a lot of uh, folks asked, uh, how can they become members from oh, yeah, the yeah. countries? <laughs> so that's a great question. I'm really happy because like we are really, so BIMS is a global organization. We are so proud that we, we represent 31 countries, right? And we're literally growing every single day. Um, and so if you're looking to uh, 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 be a part of BIMS, really just go to our website. Um, you'll see an area where it says join um, and you're able to join there, whether you're ready to be a, a, a member or you want to just subscribe to our list, you can. To start being a part of it. I'm also really proud to announce that in the coming weeks, it was, I think within the next two weeks, we're going to be launching a new membership platform um, and it's meant to be global. Um, so we're going to be far more interactive and offer a lot more benefits. And so one of the things you guys will see with us, um, we're, we're really welcome our international community with open arms, right? You know, I, I myself speak multiple languages. Um, <laughs> where you will notice that we are in conferences, um, we are in uh, uh, panels throughout the globe. Um, we, 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 just this year alone, we've been to Ghana, we've been to Spain, we've been to, I mean, I think nearly a dozen countries. And the great thing that makes me really feel great about it is that every time we go somewhere, right, we end up getting a tap on the shoulder and turn around and say, hey, I'm a BIMS member, right? <laughs> and so, we really encourage everyone in the field um, who really want to really network with us to really come on board. Um, it's in really truly an open space. We have a number of safe spaces for you. And BIMS is really, uh, we really hark on not just professional development, but really personal development. Uh, we have a number of safe spaces where people are really able to talk openly about their challenges and concerns in the field and really, uh, make real true friendships and connections. And that's really what, what we're about. We really wanna be able to speak as one unifying voice globally because we are all really kind of focused on this one real true overarching cause. 
that's amazing yeah i was one one other question that uh came up it was uh do we need first to become a member and then apply for uh the leadership program or how is the the order yes. for instance yes so yes you, you are for the leadership program you definitely you definitely have to become a member but and this is also something I really want to, uh, uh, um, I'm happy to have so many international people because we want more international people doing BIMS Bytes. So membership right now is $125 a year, $120 a year, right? Which is about 10 bucks a month. But remember, if you do two BIMS Bytes, right? So basically it means if you, if you do about 16 minutes worth of work for us, you will have paid for your membership. And, and then have money to, to, to go buy some stuff, some snacks, and some food, right? So we make it as convenient as possible for um, anyone to be a part of BIMS. Um, so really just reaching out to say, hey, I want to be a member. Hey, I want to uh, um, join. Um, you know, we'll get you everything you need. And if, if you're having issues with, um, hey, you know, hey, you know, I'm, I'm having issues with, you know, coming up with the funds, um, we're able to help with that too. But we really want to hear your voices. We really want to. We really want to see. Uh, we give you an, a platform for you to kind of really showcase what you contribute. So you know, being a part of BIMS Bites, um, being a part of BIMS Diabetes, doing something for the kids um, is a way of giving back to this community and growing it, um, and as well as like earning with BIMS. So um, we encourage it. It'll make your your membership free. Um, so please, you know, we want you to join in, even if you want to try give, doing something in a different language, we'd love to have that too. Oh, that's amazing. <laughs> Good to know. Mm -hmm. uh, there is a, a question from Talita. She asking like, from all these uh, international countries that already are part of the BIMS, uh, do you have any members from Guinea-Bissau? I do not think so. I would have to look. I, I don't want to say yes or no, because I do not know. I'd be lying to you if I said I knew all 31 countries in my head. <laughs> I can't I can pull it up. But um, the great part about it is that um, no matter where you are, let's say even if you're just on a small island, you're let's say the only person there. The, the great thing about BIMS, the BIMS community, is that it connects you to the rest of the world, right? When we go to conferences, it's really, really cool to come across and people say, gosh, you know, I was looking, I, I mean, we have video tutorials of people saying, you know what, I really was ready to quit. There was, I was by myself at this big university and, you know, I really wasn't just feeling like, hey, do I really want to like go, is there anybody else who cares about this like, besides me? And then them joining BAMS and realizing, oh, like, wow, like, yeah, I'm by myself right here, but nationally and globally, there's a bunch of people like me all over. And they're there to connect with, we're open. We have BIMS general body meetings. We have an international general body meeting that we do every quarter. And now we're looking to grow that every month um, where the general body meeting is the our big virtual meeting that we have. Uh, everybody comes and really talks and we open up a really great safe space for everybody to really talk. We really want you to be real and authentic. Um, if you ever meet myself and our CEO, you will say to yourself like, wow, these people are really themselves. We're not with all the fluff. We're real people in the field and we want you to be yourselves. And it's an open place for you to be that person and be and, and be accepted. Uh, that is amazing. Uh, I had the opportunity last year to meet Ta Tiara during a conference. We, she, she was a speaker at the Marine Life 2020 uh, side event in, in the Ocean Conference last year. It was amazing like sh how she she uh, related to this belonging uh, cessation to invite every every people from color to to join it. It was amazing. It was so That's what we want, so you know. For us to showcase diversity, all of us people of color really have to come together and really have to have that one unified voice that we are here. And we're making real serious impacts in the field. That is amazing. That is amazing. So let's go for another question from Urias Taylor, uh, also about the planning to, to see this uh, program becoming global. So especially in countries where the career of marine science is almost no existence how you guys were gonna tag that you know like yeah when there is so no that. so right now 
so there's the, there's so many challenges when it comes to working in the field of, of globally, uh, even even getting into it at times, right? And so, uh, what we're looking to do is really kind of connect one with real resources as far as like um, schools and programs you can go into. We 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 have a great learning team. It's a team of uh, three contractors we have led by our chief learning officer. Uh, connecting with that team, they have they are very amazing, uh, passionate people, and what they do is primarily work on that education side. Uh, and we're we're moving more into doing more internationally. So really coming in and saying, "Hey, I'm in such and such area. I'm looking to get in the field. You know, um, where where do I? How do I make that first step?" That's what they do and say, "Okay, you know, here's some of the programs you can go through in your area, or if you're looking to go abroad." Um, here's some opportunities for you, and as well as connecting them with some funding sources. The great part about it is that there's a lot of grants and scholarships out there. Um, and so that's what we kind of do is connecting with that funding and grants. And here, you need to fill this out. You need to go through these steps in order to go um, to the next level. So where you are right now is not it, it, there are some hurdles to go through, but it, it will not limit you if you have the desire to do so. If you have the desire to do so, and you're willing to put yourself out there, ask the questions, we will help you, we'll get you connected. And it really, then it really comes to you making sure, you know, we have so many people that we work with um, and we, that are part of our team that have overcome so many barriers, you know, and <clears throat> that's kind of just a part of life. And so BIMS is created to really to assist you with those barriers and really kind of be authentic and true and say, hey, you know, this is what you need to do and we're here to work with you along the way. So um, don't be scared wherever you are. If you look around and there's nobody in the field, we're here for that. That's exactly why we were created actually, because by far, trust me, you are not the only person feeling that way. And that's that's what has made BIMS um, as successful as we have been able to be in the past three years, you know, it's really through sh the sheer support of all of you out there who said, wow, like, I didn't know this existed. And this is really important to me. Yeah, great. So we have another question from David Allen. Uh, he, he says that is, uh, this is a gener gener generational, multi-generation challenge you're trying to address, like regarding all, all the BEANS programs, and he mm -hmm. applauds this effort. So he asks, do you feel that you have the necessary commitment from your founders to address this challenge? And what's the commitment have your founders made to change their practices to improve the health of the pipeline? Oh, okay, gotcha. Is he saying funders or founders? Funders. Okay, great. So we have had great um, uh, funders. Um, as I said, we've been able to raise about $4 million in the last three years. Uh, we just got awarded the $2 million grant. Um, also, we, we get great funders like, you know, m -Bond, who has um, really kind of, Frank and m -Bond has really great and helped us as far as like a lot of our travel. So we feel that we have had a great amount of support in the last three years um, that has allowed us to really expand these programs and allow, allowed us to kind of step forward daily, feeling very confident. Now, of course, when it comes to, you know, funding and, and, and fund, that's a challenge for every nonprofit organization. It's why we focus so much on building a robust organi you know, organization. The great part about BIMS is that um, we invite different backgrounds to work with us. And I'll give you an example. Like, I do not, I am not a marine scientist. I do not have a marine science background, right? But I have a passion for the ocean and I have great operational skills. And I utilize that for BIMS. We have a great team of outreach people who don't all have marine science backgrounds, but we make, we, we, we create bridges throughout different industries and organizations because you'd be very surprised how many of them are interested in our mission in, in Alliance. And so we have had great support for some, um, for many of the organizations that I showed before um, who really see our true impact. We just released our impact uh, report. Uh, if you get a chance to go on our website, you'll find that. And this is kind of, um, we've been kind of so busy that we kind of did that. We had to do a two year one, so we had to catch up. And at the end of it, we, we looked back and we read it. We were impressed, like, wow, we didn't realize we did so much, right? 
And so our funders and our, and, um, our stakeholders, uh, when they saw that, when they see the impacts we're making, they're encouraged. And I think when it comes to organizations such as ours, we have to make sure that we stay on with the mission, right? It's my key, my metric for success for BIMS at the end of 2023 is not to look back and say, well, we raised all this money and we did this, whatever, right? It really is, what were the impacts of the programs we had? How many, did we, did we meet the metric that we set to have the amount of people that we want to participate in BIMS week? Did we meet the metrics for BIMS title wave? Did we, are we expanding BIMS TV and reaching more audiences and more students? How many um, uh, education organizations have we created a bridge with? These are the true measures for success as an organization. Because I believe with the work, everything else will come into place. And so we are very committed to doing this work. Uh, we have seen, we believe that the success that we have isn't ours to our claim to fame. It is the claim to fame of those who support us. Um, you know, they're the one that made Black and Marine Science what it is today. And they're the ones that are going to continue to grow and make Black and Marine Science what it's going to be for decades to come. Amazing, yeah. So one, one curiosity that I have. So here in Brazil, we have these systems for like quotes that allows people from color to, to get like a uh, percentage in, in some like university degrees stuff. Or uh, for instance, we have this policy that uh, our, our undergrads, they, they can have this uh, as a law in Brazil that they can apply for, for the university that to, to get the, the grades. There is a law here in Brazil that uh, uh, people from Colo can, can apply and have more like a, a percentage that it's reserved for, for people from Colo. So do you guys work with something similar in, in BIMS like regarding to policy making to make sure that people from Colo get in like marine programs in universities or, you know, like some fellowships is specific for for us so we we do not directly um we do not directly um advocate for a specific a um we don't directly for specific laws and litigate and, and changes right what we do is we we support um we provide our support for those type of initiatives so there are a number of initiatives um you know throughout you know the nation um, for particularly uh, different communities of colors that are in that are have a lot of coastal impacts, um, we lend our support there. Um, we also have our team is very committed to creating real STEM pipelines, um, and I think we've been able to do that very effectively by developing real useful resources for classrooms. Um, Oftentimes when we travel and have boobs, I can tell you it's like nine, it's nearly like 75 to 90 percent of people who are approaching us are approaching us in terms of how can they get more educated. Um, I know a teacher, I am a teacher, I have students, I have kids, and the right. And so we have seen the response to curriculums we have developed, um, informational packages we've developed, um, digital products we've developed all in the terms of education make a big impact. Literally, we get daily emails about, hey, my, my daughter, or my son, you know, they know every shark, they know every, you know, everything in the ocean. Um, I didn't even know that they could become a marine scientist. Um, what options are there in the field? And sending that information out. And so what we're, we're really focusing on that is like, we can sure that we have vetted resources with different schools. We know about many of the scholarships many of the funding opportunities. And what we do with our members is to connect them with that. There's so many things people didn't even know. It's like, I wanna get in the field. I don't know where, where school, what schools I can go to. Here are a number of historic black colleges. Here are the colleges you can get into. Here are the funding programs. Here's the steps you can take. And then from there, here who you can work with and talk to to kind of guide you along the way. Here's some professors that we work with, and then here are some funding sources. Here's, here's the, um, the route you can take with this degree. Um, to get yourself employed. I mean, and then here's our job board of, of vetted opportunities that we have. So we try to create really a robust platform that, that can really take you from A to B and then Z. <laughs> Great. <laughs> <laughs> 
great effort. Uh, there is another question from uh, Carlos Rodriguez. He says he also thinks that it's really interesting programs that you guys have. And he was more curious about like, uh, you already said some of the, where the funds come from, but like specifically those programs are, uh, are fun like can you fund international students only americans for those programs that you you have no access? yeah you can you just have to apply you so we, we open up an application process and you just go through it and then we, we we pick them so yeah we do you can come in as an international uh, student um really i mean it's really only limited if you're got to get a passport a visa or something like that but Otherwise, no. It, um, and again, a part of this conversation and why we're happy to be here is because we are actively, and I can tell you as, as, as an executive for BIMS, it is one of our ma major priorities is to glow and grow internationally. It's why we, when we, we so much encourage you guys to participate with BIMS, do not be intimidated by it. Do not be concerned by it. Um, we, we want your participation because it's through you that we can grow more internationally. I need more folks in Brazil. <laughs> okay. But, I'm on the list know, already. I'm not maybe yeah, because I did you know, in any um, <laughs> we're we're looking to, you know, launch an ambassador an ambassador program. Um, we want to establish a BIMS territory in, in Brazil and say, hey, this is our Brazilian team. You know, we got four or five of you, and now we have a Brazilian learning team. We have a Brazil, we have a, a, a attorneys involved, people who are, you know, environmental attorneys, people who can actually do some work in Brazil so we can create a coalition there using the BIMS brand, right? And so we have a strong brand and we're looking to grow that footprint and really kind of get you guys activated because um a lot of the major foundations in BIMS, right, is that there's a thing, I don't know if you guys have heard, it's called environmental anxiety. Right. And environmental anxiety happens with a lot of people come out in the field, right? When it happens, they either happen, they come out and they get overwhelmed because they realize there's so many problems and they don't know where to start. Right. There's that. Or they come out and they just feel like, man, I'm just kind of doing this thing by myself. No one around me seems to care. I don't talk to anybody any, at, at all. It just kind of just seems like it's just all on me. Right. Or they go out and just really feel like, Wow, you know, I'm I, I'm I have my doctorate. I am, you know, Dr. Pinera, right? And I am working with a really older crowd who doesn't necessarily provide me the respect that I'm doing, the recognition that I'm due, even though technically we're at the same level and I'm doing this level of work. And so we see to these are it's at the forefront of our mind that we understand these issues. And it's why we 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 develop when we develop programs at BIMS. This is a very, it's a very deliberate and conscious effort that we do to make sure you feel safe and welcome and recognized um, coming in as you are. Great. That it's amazing. Uh, yeah, I had I had these questions first because I, I I'm on the list. I, I remember that during the pandemics, I I saw like on Instagram the first videos from Tiara on the aquarium showing everything, and then I just applied like in like 2021 or something, and it was where I started to to get to know Beams as well. And it's great to see that we can, like, from other countries, uh, join this this movement. It's also incredible. A lot yeah, of the we want, questions. Was we not only want you to, listen. We not only want you to join. We want you, we want your feedback. And we want you to participate. Like, you mean you know how amazing it would be for me to have like a all Spanish or all Portuguese BIMS bites? That'd be like amazing. <laughs> <laughs> we want we want you to do that. We really do, and we'll compensate you for it. So this is why we're here. We want you guys to know about these programs, how to participate with, participate with BIMS, and we understand the hurdles you may have, and we try to create, you know, uh, uh, real solutions for those challenges. So, like I said, don't be intimidated to join as a member. Like, you want to join the member, you don't have the money, do BIMS Bites. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Yeah, so there is also a... <laughs> we'll pay you so you can pay us. <laughs> so I think that uh, this is the question that Talita said. Uh, uh, can we elaborate? Can you elaborate how we can uh, contribute to the beans bites? Like, oh, yeah, absolutely. which kind so of videos? You... And stuff. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to drop it in right here. Bims bites contact. Okay. You're going to contact. Her name is Leslie at bims.org. All right, so you're going to contact right there. So Leslie, L-E-S-L-I-E, -E, at BIMS.org. 
um, you're going to reach right out and say, hey, I'm from some such. I want to become a member, but um, hey, I want to participate in Ben's Bites. And you're, she's going to send you out a form and you're going to tell us straight up, hey, you know, this is what I want to do. We're, we'll tell you how we want things set up. And if you say, hey, I have I, I was here and I'm speaking to Jermaine and he said, hey, I can I want to be the first one to do all Ben's Bites in, in for Brazil. And I want to do it in Portuguese. I want to. That's what we want to see. Right. And so reach out to us directly and say, hey, this is what I want to do. I want to present Ben's Bites. I want to be a member. Um, that's what we're about. So that direct contact with Leslie at BIMS.org is reach out directly, say, hey, you know, I want to become a member, or I want to do BIMS Bites, um, or I want to come to the, you know, uh, uh, the, uh, the BIMS conference um, coming up. This That's how you directly reach out to us. And it's our job then to make sure you get the information um, to get you started. Um, so don't be timid about it. Um, you know, we're always available. I'll also give you guys our general email as well, which I check all the time. Um, you know, shoot us that email and uh, really just connect with us. Uh, we're getting better every day. Like I said, I'm really excited to be, uh, it's been a lot of work, but we're going to have a new uh, membership platform and it's intentionally made to uh, support um, BIMS members globally. So you guys are going to love it. Uh, but yeah, it's, if you guys want BIMS to grow and get better, it really starts with it the people who are involved in BIMS. Um, it's really you because what BIMS is, is your tribe. Um, people, you're excited about it right now because you're hearing about it and because you know that you found this place where you kind of feel like you can belong. And that's what BIMS is. It's just that when you on arrival feeling that, hey, you know what, I belong here. You know, these are my type of people, right? And so even if you're not around that right now, your day-to-day, -day, you have BIMS as support. Great. So there is a, a question from Frank. Hi, Frank. Oh, yeah. Uh, thank you, Jermaine, for the overview of BIMS. Uh, what do you think uh, are the two or three highest priorities of BIM and how can international networks like MBON and the Marine Life 2030 program of Ocean Decade help to participate? Yeah. So first of all, shout out to BIM. A shout out to Frank and MBON. Um, who supported us um, to go to uh, WAMS, uh, the West African Marine Science Symposium in Ghana um, a couple of weeks ago. Um, my goodness, it was one of the most enlightening um, and inspiring trips I've ever been on. Um, and it really kind of rearranged some priorities for me, um, really kind of understanding where the international uh, barriers are. And so, Going to that trip and meeting, we met, I met a number of people like uh, from National Geographic um, and really got to sit down with, with scientists in the field and really understand some of the challenges and the barriers. And, and our, we also understood that those challenges and barriers are very consistent, right? We have interprobability issues where we're not able to share data um, in the best way possible for proper dissemination. We have barriers with communicating with each other, um, collaborations, there's issues with funding. And so it really kind of like maybe come back with a new global perspective on what the changes will need to be made in order to create a more robust platform at BIMS. Um, and so the priority for us is going to, one, really being able to create more educational materials um, that really have a global outlook, um, really hosting more workshops and presentations that have a more global and international outlook, um, really connecting with um, more international players and supporters um, in order to increase that impact and, and go further. And so the, the, the world is BIMS's priority because we see um, what's happening across our oceans and it comes right over here. And so that, that focus on um, international unity is an absolute priority for us because it's going to take us a real global effort to really kind of make the changes. We are about a decade or so away from having more plastic in the water than we have um, uh, animals. And that's a serious, it's just a global issue. 
Um, the, the, these, these programs that we're developing, um, these are about real global issues where you have, <laughs> where you have people working in the field and who don't know how to swim, um, <laughs> right? These are where well, you have people who are working in the field who don't have any hands-on experience or real-world experiences, um, you know? And so we're looking to make real impacts there. And so um, these are the priorities for BIMS is really to create a real um, functional and robust um, platform that can make a real global impact um, for those of us in the field. And that's kind of why I think our priorities are and should be. Amazing. And and by doing these global things, you probably will think about like uh, how to create these working task groups with multiple languages as well, because Talita is, was saying that uh, it, like non-speaking, uh, non-English speaking people have trouble to join. So like uh, from Africa or even from oh, absolutely. Brazil. So <laughs> I, I come from a family who are, uh, who are all multilingual. My dad speaks five languages. I, preach, I speak three. My, all my uncles speak like between seven and eight. Um, and so um, coming into BIMS, I came in initially with just this global outlook of, you know, who we can bring in and making sure that that language is not a barrier. We're, we're, the ocean is one ocean. We are all connected by this one body of water. So whether you're in Brazil, China, anywhere, we're focused on many of the same issues. And that's what was kind of kind of really great about going to a conference like WAMS, right? And having people from all over come over. And we're talking about, you know, you know, West Africa. But we're also talking about really how it's impacting like globally. And, you know, hearing those same issues um, talked about over and over again, really kind of bring it into perspective, like, oh, okay, this is where we need, this is the shift we need to make, this is where we need to be, because there's obvious real issues right here, right? We, we, we need to adopt some interoperability standards, right? We need to, opt, we need to adopt new, new global and international protocols, right? And so I think where my experience is, is really, really to develop, you know, bends into um, a sustainable place that's kind of rooted in how we can leverage um, sustainable community strategies as an avenue for developing like additional empirical data that can quantify the abatement potential and in innovations in marine science, um, in climate tech, um, and really kind of create, create, you know, just that real data that people can actually use um, to create real abatements in the in, in the ocean, um, the, in the negative impacts. Okay, great. Uh, so David has another question. So, how much do you uh, do to connect with other organizations with similar remits? For example, there is a lot of momentum with improving inclusion of indigenous people globally in the geoscience. Do you ever partner with such organization to advocate for special uh, reforms together? And I also like would add an uh, organization like WIMS, like Black Women Ecology and Evolution yeah. Marine Science as well. So yeah, WIMS are great partners of ours. Um, we, we, we do collaborate, we do speak, we, um, we're looking to, to grow that even more. Um, we have been abroad a number of times. I don't think we have, we've been able to make real strong connections as far as understanding some of the things that are happening abroad with certain communities, but I know here in America in particular, like we've worked with the Gullah Nation, which is a major uh, Black coastal um, a community. Um, and we seek to advocate um, for all these communities, um, both nationally and globally, for really environmental impacts that are affecting, that are affecting those coastal areas, right? Um, and so one of the things we're going to be working on a lot is really talking about like um, coastal resilience in the next, in the next year. Um, because we feel like that is going to be really where we can make a really great impact um, in our communities, both here and internationally. Uh, we are seeing people who are really being affected by, you know, erosion, storms are more frequent, uh, floodings are more frequent. And so where I think we're going to be able to make the biggest impact is really advocating, um, you know, internationally and globally for coastal, more coastal resiliency. Um, you know, people are going to live where they, where they have been living for hundreds of years, some of them, um, generations, this is their, this is their homeland and um, they wanna stay there, but the environment um, and, and issues that are happening in the environment are making it increasingly difficult for them. And so 
without any changes, um, you may see real great migrations of these people who, who are maybe forced to leave their ancestral homelands and uh, take up roots somewhere else. And as we know, as we've all seen, via whether we're reading the news or, or, or staying on top of you know, things, that's a very um, traumatic experience um, to have to leave and go somewhere and take up roots and, and not knowing whether you're going to be welcome, uh, whether you're going to have enough resources to, to survive. And so, um, you know, climate resiliency is looking something we're looking to um, be at the forefront of um, internationally as a real advocate for it. Yeah, it's it's really important. Yeah, Envir environmental racism, like even here in Brazil, we we face it. Like, we are the people who who suffers more with all these dis disasters. So we need to have uh, to get together and fight for those efforts, so we mm -hmm. can come up with. So I and that's like and that's the and that's where I feel like um, if people really understand our mission and the real impact BIMS can have, it really puts a banner for us to speak as a real unified voice. Um, that's where we're really gonna be the biggest impact. You know, we, 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 ha we really need to have real unification and understand that, hey, you know, it's not just us, this is a global movement. And we're gonna put real global pressure um, for things to be done. Yes, thank you so much, Jeremiah. I think we are, already a little bit uh, over our time and I really really would like to thank you and all the BIMS team to join us in this Marine Biodiversity Network Friday and I also want to thank all the organizers people from Art Center Joanna, Jose, Katarina and I'll, I'll leave you with like a, a last uh, message or invitation for all the participants that are here like from Brazil Dr. Yara she's our queen from the mangroves <laughs> she's online watching us and there are a lot of uh, folks in, in Africa and in Europe so do you have like a special final message for all of us <laughs> yeah absolutely uh first of all shout out uh to a lot of uh, all my African folks uh I, I give you guys a big shout out all the time because you guys the continent of Africa has our most members I think we represent about 17 countries in Africa right now um, so, but don't worry, Latin America, you guys can catch up. All right. <laughs> you got it. All you guys in Europe, Latin America, you guys can catch up. Don't let them scare you. You guys can catch up. Um, so I just want to finish this off by saying, um, you know, uh, black and Marine scientists, you know, we are focused on, uh, really amplifying our voices and finding the voices of those of us in the field or interested in the field. Um, don't be scared to come up, come on board, Jonas, um, hold hands with us. We are looking to have real advocacy and real work with all of you out here. So um, definitely check us out at BIMS.org. If you're able to, um, you know, come to the BIMS conference um, and see us live and have a blast with us, and seriously, it's going to be a lot of fun, definitely check us out at BIMS.org slash BIMS week 2023. I put it in here. Check us out. It's going to be a great time. Also, if you're looking to be a sponsor or vendor, check us out there. And uh, again, if you want to join and money's a barrier, any barrier, there are no barriers at BIM. We have solutions. So you can you reach out to us and say, we want to join and I have a barrier. We will give you a solution. We, will, we want you on board. So please get excited. Don't be timid. Um, we don't bite. <laughs> uh, and we have a lot of fun. We want you to be a part. We want you to grow this program, but we can't do this without you guys. So, um, and again, I just want to thank all of you guys who put this together. You guys are amazing. Um, thank you guys so much for inviting us. Um, I'm so happy to speak here and I hope to get a chance and opportunity to do it again. Thank you so much, man. Yes, so with that, uh, I would close our session. And with all the information, please contact your man if you guys need uh, to know a little bit more and get engaged with all this in amazing programs that BEAMS offer for all of us. <laughs> Bye, everybody. <laughs> Bye, guys.